Aston Martin impressed everyone with its speed during winter testing. This was seen during the Bahrain Grand Prix, when Alonso finished third in his debut with the Silverstone-based team. The season's first race, at Sakir, demonstrated that Aston Martin, which placed eighth in the 2022 Constructors' Championship, had bridged the gap between the middle of the field and the front runners. It may now contend for the third place with Mercedes, yet more good news appears to be on the way for the British team since they are far from finished. With the Jetta Grand Prix coming up this weekend, more upgrades seem to be on the way. More on that later. Let's get on with the video. What made it notable was that Aston Martin's third place finish came out of nowhere for a team that had received little notice prior to the winter. Nevertheless, in just a few months since finishing seventh in the Constructors Championship last year, they had made a significant leap and currently produce what is likely the second fastest car. In F1, teams typically do not progress as quickly. They understand how difficult it can be to climb up one or two slots per year. As a result, Aston Martin's significant advancement has piqued the interest of several of its competitors. Even if they must accept that someone else did a better job, it has provided them with an excellent understanding of what it takes to be successful in F1. Aston Martin's success can be attributed to a number of factors. The rules and the cost cap were two of them. Formula One implemented a cost cap for two distinct reasons. One goal was to keep teams from going out of business as a result of excessive spending. The other goal was to bring future teams closer together on the grid. On the competitive side, the budget cap has done its job by forcing top teams to reduce the number of people they hire and the amount of money they can spend on improving their vehicles. This is especially good for the high-priced midfield teams like Aston Martin. They haven't had to give up much because they are close to the cost cap limit, and they may even be able to modify their squads to better match the new rules. Aston Martin, according to the technical director Dan Fallows, has been one of those teams in the sweet spot area. He stated that his team is fortunate to be able to build up their team while staying under the cost cap. He mentioned that they have had the opportunity to analyze how to increase their spending without crossing the cost cap limit. This has allowed the team to grow in a more natural and organic manner. Fellows believes that this approach gives them an advantage over other teams that started over the cost cap and had to cut back. Another factor is infrastructure. Teams can spend the same amount of money but have different facilities. Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes were able to stay so far ahead of the competition last year because they had stronger infrastructure and methods in place for a year. These enhancements will continue to pay off for some time. Teams with older wind tunnels and simulators, such as McLaren, have realized that they cannot compete in the long run without new infrastructure. Aston Martin reaches the same conclusion, which is why its new factory, simulator, and wind tunnel are all nearing completion. Yet, it has also done what it could in the short term to address issues. It has invested a lot of money in high-tech equipment at its Silverstone headquarters, and signing the arrangement to utilize the Mercedes wind tunnel many years ago was critical to its success. After all, a facility that is good enough for a team that has won several championships must be a good facility. Hiring the appropriate people was an important factor, if not the most important factor. One thing has been evident since Aston Martin's owner, Lawrence Stroll, took over the team. He has worked hard to discover the best of everything. Along with investing heavily in the infrastructure, he has also worked hard to ensure that the proper individuals are on the team to help it progress. So Stroll has done everything he can to bring in the best individuals, even if it means spending a lot of money and upsetting other teams. At his debut, he stated that passion stems from excitement and that when he cares deeply about anything, he succeeds. As a result, they hired Red Bull's TD Fallows, Mercedes Deputy Technical Director Eric Blandin, and Luca Verbato, who formerly worked for McLaren, Toro Rosso, Manor, and Sauber. They are all acutely aware of the amount of effort and focus required to achieve success at the pinnacle of F1. Even if the team has had proper tools and personnel, it will be useless if they have the wrong mentality. And it's evident that if Aston Martin wants to win, it'll have to change things up a little and do things its own way. It has never been a team that followed the rules. Whether it was using customer parts, like the Mercedes gearbox and rear suspension it is currently purchasing, or going after concepts that others had first. Several of Aston Martin's competitors believe that the only way to win is to design and construct every component yourself. Aston Martin, on the other hand, is not convinced. Apart from that, there should be an openness to the potential that other teams have better ideas than you. 
It didn't take long for Aston Martin to change its mind and move to the Red Bull option at the Spanish Grand Prix after starting 2022 with the erroneous car plan. Also, as it appears in F1 that Red Bull's downwash design may be the greatest way to win in the ground effect area, Aston Martin has decided to stick with it and add its own style rather than trying to come up with something better from scratch. Fallow stated earlier this year at the team's inauguration that one of tech genius Adrian Newey's greatest assets in F1 was that he didn't lock himself off to other people's ideas. This was a telling remark. One thing that cannot be overlooked is how much Fernando Alonso has contributed to the team since his arrival. It was interesting to hear James Vowles, the new head of the Williams team, claim that Alonso's influence was the first reason for Aston Martin's 2023 jump. When it comes to getting the most out of signing one of the top drivers on the grid, teams must keep two things in mind. First, by pushing the car to its limits, the two-time world champion should be able to gain a few tenths of a second. Then there's the belief and motivation that someone like Alonso can bring to the organization. If employees know that greater and better rewards are on the way, they will be more willing to go the extra mile and dig a little deeper. It appears that Aston Martin hasn't made such a successful leap due to a single factor. Instead, a number of simple elements have come together to propel it fast to the front of the grid. Moreover, as Alonso pointed out after Bahrain, the squad hasn't accomplished anything that competitor teams couldn't accomplish on their own. While he was curious to see if Aston's headline-grabbing form would carry over to Saudi Arabia and Australia, he was certain his new squad could keep up progress throughout the year, because it began with what he called a basic car for Bahrain. Sure, we need to wait for Jeddah, Australia, very different tracks, so I'm curious to see if we can keep this form in different circuits," Alonso said. But on the other hand, I think the car that we have now is just a very basic car that we launched, and we start the season with the completely new concept. I think there is a lot more to come in terms of development with this project, so I'm optimistic for that. Aston also made gains through 2022, but because it began on the back foot, its development curve remains hidden. In the end, it fell barely short of passing Alfa Romeo in the constructor's rankings. If Aston Martin can maintain their recent development, an unexpected title contest might be the tale of F1 in 2023. Do you believe Aston Martin can fight for the crown this year? We all took it for granted and maybe smiled a bit when Alonso declared at the AMR23 launch that he wants to compete for the title, but that he doesn't expect that for several years. What can they achieve this season? Nonetheless, it'll be exciting. Please share your ideas and opinions in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.